Hiya crafters, Amy here, and today I'm going to show you some simple water coloring with my Catherine Pooler ink pads. So let's jump right in. Now the way that I'm going to do this today is by using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. Now this is not watercolor paper, but it does handle water well, and it has almost like a coating on it, which I find really helps um, allow the ink to move around for painting. So that's my preferred sort of paper for this technique. And I have an A2 size card base. I have some mini ink pads from Catherine Pooler and this gorgeous floral from Concord and Ninth. And I will link all the products below the video in the description box. But here's a photo of the card that I'm gonna make for you today. You can see there's a gorgeous, rich pigmented watercolored background it came together super quick and anyone can do it, I promise. So here you can see I have a water brush. These are from Arteza. These are my favorite water brushes. They hold the water, you kind of squeeze them um, as you need the water and then you know use it just like a paintbrush. So I'm going to take a plethora of these gorgeous colors and just smush them right down on my work surface. I have a Tim Holtz glass mat, but you could use a piece of acrylic or if you have um, a palette of sorts, whatever works for you. But basically I decide to start with the yellow. Now if you're like me, the yellow often gets lost in the shuffle. So I like to start with the yellow first because then I can make it nice and wide knowing that it will blend with the other colors and then I won't end up losing the yellow in the rainbow when all is said and done. So you can see how quickly I'm doing this. I do have it sped up, but it's super easy. I'm just kind of squishing some water out, uh, letting it mix with the pigment, and then just kind of cleaning that water brush off on my stamp chamois as I go from color to color. So this is a super easy way to create a gorgeous rainbow background, maybe if you don't feel like ink blending. And it's an, a fun way to stretch your supplies because you can use any of your water reactive dye inks, like distress inks work great for this, um, whatever you have in your stash, but you can use them in a different way um, and you know have fun playing. So here I don't wanna waste this extra pigment, so I take another piece of the Bristol Smooth paper here and I just do an ink smushing technique in that little water spray bottle, I actually have perfect pearls. So that's a fun way to add a little bit of shimmer. Um, just have a little designated sprayer and add some perfect pearls in with your water and then you get kind of a nice little unexpected shine to your um, pigment when you do this technique. So here I'm just creating this panel. I don't end up using it in today's cards, but I will use it on a future video, so be sure to watch for that. And if you wanna be notified of future videos, whenever I post content, if you hit the bell, then you'll be notified anytime I post a new video. So here's the two panels. I did hit them with my you know, heat tool because you know I'm not patient. I'll be the first to admit it, I'm not a patient person. But here's the gorgeous rainbow, and it looks so much prettier in real life and even in the photos. My lighting in my craft room isn't that great, but you get the idea. And I'm going to cut the panel down with my paper rose stitched rectangle dies. I have some low-tech tape here. I'm just going to take it off screen and run it through my die cutting machine so it gives it a nice finished edge. And then I'm going to load this panel up into my Misty and take this gorgeous huge floral out. And you'll see I do kind of have it over the edge of the panel because I do want to have some space on the panel where it's not all stamped. So just play around in your Misty. This is the mini Misty, um, obviously, so you don't have a whole lot of room to work with. But if you have the original Misty, um, then you might have more options in terms of you know your layout. But this is a fun way if you collect floral stamps like I do and don't always feel like coloring them in like me, <laughs> then this is a fun way to maybe use your stamp and stretch your supplies in that way because you don't have to color it in. You can instead create a gorgeous colorful background either through this technique or blending and then just stamp black on top of it and then you still get to use that gorgeous product but you don't have to commit to coloring it all in. So here is my sentiment book. I decide to shop this for my die cut that I want to use on the card, and I'm not sure, I don't really have a plan, so I'm kind of flipping through. But this is my storage solution for um, my batching mentality. I tend to sit down and make a lot of cards at once. So when I have a lot of these components ready to go, it allows me to really kind of streamline the process and uh, create a bunch of cards in one sitting. 
So here I'm kind of debating which die cut I want to use, but ultimately these are little baseball card pockets, like little protector sheets, and I just have them in a three ring binder. And I decided to go with this glitter embossed thanks die cut from Trinity Stamps. I do have the stamps and the coordinating die. Now, instead of messing with little fiddly bits of foam, this is my solution here. Um, I purchased these adhesive back foam sheets from Amazon. I'll link them below in the video description box. But basically I take the coordinating die and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I just liquid glue the die cut down to that. Because first of all, you make yourself a glorified stick sticker. Second of all, you get that gorgeous color when you look at it from the side. And third of all, you get nice even dimension, which is great for shipping, no saggy bits, and you don't have to mess with little fiddly bits of phone tape, which again, uh, that's referenced my patience, which I don't have. <laughs> so this is my solution to that. So it gives it a nice finished look um, with even dimension behind your die cut. And yeah, it's just what I like to do. So here I have my little um, grid sheet that I just recently got from Simon Says Stamps. This helps you line up your sentiments um, inside of your stamp platform to make sure you have it nice and straight. So I'm just using that and loading one of the sub sentiments from the same stamp set here off to the left, the Trinity stamps, just to kind of continue on inside the card. Um, it says a note of gratitude for all you do. So it's a nice compliment to this thanks die cut that I'm putting on the front of the card here. But basically I just remove the adhesive or the backer rather from the adhesive back foam and stick that in that nice space that I created in the lower right. And that's going to finish this card. Oh, except for the blingage. How can I forget the blingage? <laughs> anyway, I have these um, pretty iridescent sequins in various different sizes and I like to put them in odd numbers. So I have three on one side two on another and I'm just using my jewel picker here and some liquid glue to attach that around the thanks. Um, I prefer to do odd numbers. I find them more visually appealing from a design perspective but you do you whatever you prefer. It's your creation. But here's the finished card. You can see that nice finished stitched edge and all that gorgeous color uh, from the watercolor and that nice even dimension with the pop of blue behind it for the foam tape. And then the nice little sentiment on the inside of the card to finish it off. So I hope you enjoyed this technique and I hope you'll give this a try with your water reactive dye inks and really stretch your supplies. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll have some other videos here below for you to check out if you're in the mood to take a gander. But I appreciate you watching and I'll check you next time. Thanks. Bye.